Hi, my name is Kevin Fernandez, and welcome to my channel, Gamers Genie. Today, we're going to learn how to play the college football game. Envelopes of Cash. This one to four player game designed by Andy Schwartz and published by Envelopes of Cash LLC. You are a college recruiter for a top college, trying to recruit the best players you can to create that unbeatable team. But there are also other people who are trying to do that. So you do your best you can by handing them envelopes of cash as well as other special favors and commodities to get yourself the best team. Will you be able to build the ultimate team and win that championship title? Or will you go home in shame? Find out as we go to the table and learn how to play Envelopes of Cash. Place the game board in the middle of the play area. It shows a map of the United States and islands of the Pacific. In total, there are six regions with talent in distinct colors. Each region is split into several subregions called states. These do not conform the exact United States boundaries. Recruits in these regions are paid using envelopes of cash in the specific color associated with each region. Some states on the border of two regions, like here, 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 or here, are considered to be split regional spaces. These are called border states that span two regions. Border states have distinct colors from the region they border, but are generally a mix of two colors. These count as being in either region of your choice for any tally that requires a certain number of states from a given region. You pay for recruits in these states with two different colors of envelopes rather than just one color of envelope. Take the eight border state tokens and place them on their corresponding state. And a correction, there are eight border state locations. The tokens are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There we go. Note that the two tokens from a given border state are not identical but can be placed, either one of them, in either space on the map. Next, you separate your state tokens, and they're all different colors, into their distinct color for a standard game where the value for, of a recruit from each state is permitted. Match the star number on the state token to the small number on the empty state space on the map with the same color. If instead you prefer a little variety in each setup, just randomly assign four tokens. But we're going to set up for a basic game. So if it's got a two, you put it at a two. This one's got a two, so we will also put that at a two, and so on and so forth. And I'll probably speed it up for both placing tokens. And if you don't know which one goes where, it's color coded on the back. Like so. You just match the number of stars. Now grab the 40 recruit tokens, and this is just one of them. And these represent the 40 soon to be graduated high school athletes in the country. Five in each of eight position groups. You take your 40 recruit tokens and randomly assign them to states, placing one adjacent to each color in a single color and two in each border state. So two players go in border states. Like that. And 
one goes in single colors. Like that. Like so. Next, you take the envelopes of cash and you place them by color near the board. And uh, these containers were sent when I got this copy of the game. Uh, you most likely will not have these containers, so I'm just having these in here for easy access. These are the same colors as the regions, and while there is no distinct connection, the colors sometimes are doing double duty as regions and types of envelopes. The player who most recently watched a college football game gets to be the starting player and will receive this starting player token. Otherwise, determine the starting player randomly. Each player chooses a head coach either randomly or in reverse turn order and color and takes all of the tokens of that color placing one of them on the star track at zero. So I am going to play with the green and I take one of my tokens which has a little mallard and I'll put it at the zero of the star track. Players place their recruiting bus token, looks like that, on the HQ spot corresponding to their player color. Ergo, if you are playing as yellow, you place it in the yellow space. Orange, you place it in the orange space. Blue, the blue space. Green, the green space. I am playing as green, and Jordan will be playing as blue. She's always my go-to demonstration person. So, I will put her bus in the blue and mine in the green. And, you know, so it goes just south of Texas, then Florida, then you got Michigan, and of course Washington. Each player takes seven booster bucks, and we'll place them near them. And uh, I will put them near the board for easy reach. Again, same thing as with the envelopes. This is just something I'm using for convenience. Next, each player takes a player mat and calendar in the correct color of their type of symbol and places them next to each other, as I have done down here, on the side of the board closest to the colored square of that player. Well, I placed it down here for uh, camera convenience, but I would be placing it over here if I was actually playing as green in a normal game. However, this is a how to play video and for convenience, I've set it up like this. These mats and calendars will be filled with cards and envelopes as, players, as the players progress through the game. Players put the coach's whistle in their color on their calendar in March, right there. Players will take 12 envelopes of their regional color marked with the number one side and the number two on the other side. And place one envelope with the number one side face up in the envelope space of the 12 months of their calendar. One goes there, one goes there. Like so. Deal six cards to each player. And then they will choose four of them to keep, to have in their stash, and to use as the game proceeds. And discards the two they don't want. We'll put that down here. Face up into a pool of rejected cards to the side of the board. 
these cards will be available for players to choose from during the monthly card draft if they prefer them over the cards they are dealt. And that completes the setup. You're now ready for your road trip. The starting player deals two cards to each player and then deals a third to themselves. Beginning with the starting player and going clockwise, each player decides whether to take to A, take a card from their hand, which is the, these, and play it face up to the calendar in the current month, which is March. B, take a card from the pool of rejected cards over here. C, play a card from your hand or your secret stash received at the beginning of the game to the calendar face up. Or D, delay choosing cards by discarding one card from your hand face up into the pool of rejected cards and passing to the next player. If you choose A, B, or C, add all the unplayed cards from your hand but not from your secret stash face up into the discard pile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a card from my hand, place it in my calendar, place the rest of my cards in the discarded cards pile. So, but either way, the choice passes to the next player clockwise. If a pr player who previously passed has only one card left in their hand, they cannot pass again, but must choose a card, either the one in hand one of the cards in the discard pool or a card from that player's secret stash if one is still available. The process continues until all players have placed the card face up onto their calendar, a card, in the current month. This card is not yet in play, so to use it, you will need to pay the required envelopes listed on the card later in your turn to move it to your player mat. So, as you can see, it requires three yellow envelopes, so I cannot play it until I have that required cost. Once you purchase a card with envelopes, you will move that card to your player mat. So, let's just say I've got three. I'll then discard it and move it to my mat. And it now becomes useful. This may allow you to use the card once per turn to gain resources or score points. In some cases, that card provides a permanent benefit for the rest of the game, or sometimes it just provides additional points at the end of the game. The starting player should roll all six of the colored dice, like so. After rolling the dice, except for the first turn, you should check to see whether anyone has placed bets in Vegas, or won any of those bets, which I will explain a little more later in this video. Next, each player will choose the benefit of two dice, which will provide two different sets of envelopes. Multiple players are allowed to use the same dice, so there's no worry about turn order. Every die roll gives three pieces of info. Number one, specific color of envelope. Number two, the number of envelopes, and number three, when you will get the envelope, where the number one refers to the current month, two means the next month, etc., etc., etc. Players choose two colors of dice, then take the number of envelopes of that color from the supply and place them onto the calendar in the month corresponding to the die roll. And here on your screen is a table to help you figure out the die month patterns. Players may instead choose to disregard the month assigned to the die or dice if they wish by cutting the number of envelopes they received in half, rounding down, but never below one, then placing the envelopes in the current month or in any of the following five months. So here's a good example. I will take this yellow die. Now this would be six months out from now, but I will cut it in half, 
giving me three so then I can just place it in the current month. However, I will also pick this blue die which will give me six envelopes six months out from now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So once I get into September, that is mine. And that's how I will pay for that card. Other than on the first turn, if you placed a bet in Vegas in the previous month, the bet pays off now. Once all players have placed two colors of envelopes into their calendars and any winning bets have been paid out, the dice draft phase ends. Players may move the envelopes for the current month from their calendar to their player mats. These envelopes are now available to spend, so I can take an envelope here. And it's now free to spend in this month, but will be discarded at the end of the month if I do not use them. Beginning with the starting player, each player plays out a full month of actions, and then passes to the next player. On their turn, players may perform a combination of the following nine actions in any order as often as they wish if they have the resources needed, except for seven, which is marketing, which may be only done uh, once. So first one you can do is you pay for drafted cards to put them into play. Discard the exact set of envelopes that match the card's cost. Move the card from your calendar to your player mat, as we did previously, and score their star points equal to their star value of the card that has been modified using any bonuses from previously played cards, if applicable. Okay, so we did not modify this card, but we do get four points. Use cards already in play, including cards put into play this month, if a card in play provides a benefit that can be triggered and any conditions are met, it may be used as often as the card allows. Some cards have limited uses, so pay attention to those limitations. You can trade envelopes as well. Players may trade in any three envelopes of any color combination for one envelope of only one color, so, you know, so let's say I had um, a purple, an orange, and a gray. I can then trade these in, and I can take this one yellow and just place it on my player mat right there, and that's how that's done. And uh, just to let you know, a little heads up, some cards that we can play in our player mats, or you at home can do that, I mean, uh, can give you discounts on envelopes being traded. So be on the lookout for that. Next, you can also choose to move your bus. In the first nine months of the game, players get some free movement. So currently we are there and we get three free movement in uh, the month of March. Uh, and this all really depends. It's not going to stay the same. All additional movement costs one envelope. So I can go one, two, and then three onto Washington. Any more than that would cost me an envelope of any color per space. So you don't need to get picky on that. March through May, you get three. June to August, you get two free movement. And then September to November, you only get one free movement. Then once you go into December to January, you're on your own for providing your movement. And you would have to pay more with your envelopes. You can also sign a recruit. To recruit an athlete, a player must be on the recruit state space right there and must have the correct number of envelopes in the color of the state token available. So it must be green, one green. And you can also, also any uh, envelopes you have in that state you've sent via a runner. The players pay the required envelopes and put both the state and recruit token on their player mat. So I'll spend one green envelope to recruit. So I just take this recruit and I place it where it needs to go, which is down right down here. And I'll take the state and place it in the state portion of my player board. The player then rolls the 12-sided 
variable modifier die, or as we're going to refer to it from now on, the VMD. Modify the recruit state based value by die roll, by the die roll, then apply any modifiers from cards in play, scoring this modified star value immediately. So we're going to roll the die, and that gives us no stars, but it can go anywhere from plus one, plus two, to all the way down to like minus two. So you can actually lose. So, but since I rolled a zero, I only get two star points for that, uh, based off of that. Thank goodness I didn't get anything else. And you can, and now you can send envelopes via a runner. If a player has envelopes for a recruit, but is not at the recruit state, or hasn't got the full amount, the player may opt out to send a runner. Is an option to send a runner. Or all the recruits required envelopes via runner. Pay one bonus buck, like so. Then you take your token, a player token, and an envelope, and you send it, you then place it on the player you want. These envelopes may be included as payment when that player signs that recruit in the future. If someone else, however, if someone else does sign that recruit before you get to sign him, you lose that recruit and the runner and the envelope are lost. You can also run a marketing campaign. This can only be done once per month. Spend a number of bonus bucks to receive a number of star points based on the marketing table on the board. So if I spend three bonus bucks, I can get two star value. And the top part is the bonus bucks, the bottom part is how much the star value is. You can also place some bets in Vegas if you're feeling a little lucky today. Players may pay one envelope per bet to place a player token on one no color number combination on the Vegas table. On the following month, you roll the dice. If the starting player rolls that number on the colored die, the betting player receives one bonus buck and two envelopes in that color of the die they bet, not on the color of envelopes they paid to bet for in use of the new month. So I could just take this, if I had an, any more, I could just take and I'd say I place that on three and let's say I did roll a three gray there. I would then just take it. I'd get the bonus bucks, one bonus buck. And I get two envelopes in gray that I can spend in the current month because that was from the previous month. Declare your months over and just move over your coach's whistle. All players turns end with this final action. All leftover envelopes must be discarded at this point or used to place in bets in Vegas. Ending each month, players prepare for the next month or the end of the game. If it is May, August, or November, empty the discard pool. It is April, so currently we do not need to do that, but if it was May, we'd have to empty out the discard pool, and we just move it off to the side. The starting player deals one new card face up from the draw pile to form a new face up discard pool. If this is the end of February, empty the pool, but do not deal any new cards. If it is the end of August or later, discard any cards still on player's calendar from five months earlier. So as August ends, discard any cards still on the March space of the calendar. As September ends, discard any from April in your calendar and etc 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 when February ends discard all remaining cards on players calendars they are no longer available to purchase if it is not February advance each players coach whistle one to the next month who begins the process of a new month all over again 
starting with the card draft. So these should actually be gone because by now we would have spent them. If it is February, all you need to do is follow this game end process. At the end of February, the game is over and the final scoring occurs, so boom. In addition to the star points you scored during gameplay, players also scored the following end game star points. Score star points for any card marked with an end game symbol and you just follow the instruction on each card. You can perform a final marketing campaign using the marketing table on the board. So spend three bonus bucks and you get two. After that, each leftover bonus buck is kept to use as a tiebreaker. Determine the number of unique position groups each player has recruited. Add the corresponding number of start points from the position point table. So that's right over here. So if you have all the positions, all eight positions, you get 32 points. If you have one, you get one, two, two, three, four, four, eight, five, twelve, six, eighteen, seven, twenty-four, and of course, as I said previously, eight is thirty-two. So um, Jordan has four, which will give her eight points, and I have eight, which gives me thirty-two, which puts me up to forty-two. Identify the region from which each player has recruited the most recruits. Treating border states so they maximize the number of recruits from the largest region, add the corresponding number of star points from the regional point table. The player with the most star points wins. In case of a tie, the player with the most leftover bonus bucks wins, then total number of recruits, and then however else you wish. Ties are not allowed in college football anymore. And that's all you need to know to play Envelopes of Cash. If you have any questions about this game, please put them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I possibly can. Now, I want to point out that this is a Kickstarter prototype, so some of the rules that I just explained may be changed around a little bit. And, of course, if you are interested in purchasing this game, I will leave a link to any of the crowdfunding sites that they have up. There still may be late pledges, because as of now where I'm recording this, this is June, and it'll be July now. But we'll see, so I'll leave them down in the description below. You can check them out. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, hit that subscribe button, and ring the notification bell to be notified for videos just like these, and be on the lookout for our next How to Play video. But until then, thanks for the views. Thank <laughs> you.